Well, good morning, high school. Uh, glad to be with you this morning. I'm Mr. Bartell, for those of you that don't know me, which I'm sure most of you do. Uh, I'm actually really excited to be able to share with you guys this morning uh, something that's been on my heart for a while, something I've been thinking about for a while, and not just over this last year, which, uh, is it just me, or has this last year felt like 15 years long? Uh, it was like just a year ago that we heard about this weird thing happening in China and people were dying, we think, we didn't know, and then little did we know what was gonna to happen to us th two months later, really, uh, and really continues still today. Uh, but that has just kind of heightened something that I've been seeing for a while and something I've been thinking about for a while, and it's this search that really I've been going on, I don't wanna speak for you, but that I've been going on where I just, I'm trying to find God's beauty and His truth and His love and His goodness and I, I'm having a hard time seeing it. I'm having a hard time finding it. And I'm looking, but I just don't know where it could have gone. I mean, I think it was there, and I get little glimpses of it every now and then. But where is the beauty anymore? You know, where is the truth? Where is the goodness? Where is the love that I know is there? I just, just can't see it. And that, that search that I've been on, uh, you know, I, what I'm really looking for is, is I'm looking for some peace in the midst of a lot of different things uh, that are happening. And, and again, I'm just not finding it. So where this has taken me and, and where I want to take you and invite you into my, my quest, if you will, is it's taken me to the Word of God. Uh, and I'm pointing to my, my Bible down here. It's taken me to the Word of God and specifically into Romans, in Romans chapter 1. And I want to take you there and walk through some things with you because in here, in these words from Paul, is the antidote. This is where Paul says, here's what's happening, here's the situation you're in, and here is where you can find what you're looking for. So let's just kind of get right to it. But before I do, let's pray. Lord God, Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for this technology. Uh, I pray that it's working, and I pray it continues to work, Lord. Uh, and Father, I thank you for your word that is going to speak to us this morning. Uh, your word uh, leaves and does not uh, leave void, but Father, your spirit takes it and brings it to the ears that hear, uh, the minds that will receive it, and the hearts that are ready for it. So Father, please open minds and hearts this morning. May the words I speak not be mine, but be yours for your people. In Jesus' name, amen. So... You know, as I said, you know, this kind of looking for beauty and goodness and truth and love, you can look in the wrong places. I mean, of course, that's part of the problem. Uh, you look at the news, uh, which I've kind of checked out of the news for a while because I just, I mean, I was getting viscerally affected by it, like like upset by it. it, it it's, it's just not good. It was just not healthy. I just kind of had to check out. But, you know, the thing we got to recognize, too, is that, you know, events that we see, things that, that are happening, we're not actually present. We're not actually seeing them like we're there. There's, it's coming through a filter, whether it's CNBC or Fox, you know, whether it's CNN, uh, I think I put too many ends on that, CNN, uh, whatever. It, it is, it's, it's coming through a filter. It's not the actual events as they transpire. Uh, whether we just go forget about the news, I'm just going to watch a TV show. I want to just kind of check out from all that. Again, what we're getting, you know, if we're seeking peace, if we're seeking love and, and beauty in a movie, it's being filled, like it's a filter of what the, the producer thinks beauty looks like, uh, of what they think love looks like. And so, again, we're, we're not getting really kind of what we're looking for. We're getting somebody's filter of that. And then these, these things are, are no different. Uh, you know, you go into this and again, you're looking for maybe just kind of some news or, or some update, you know, on your friend, even your friends on this, right? What you see of them is a filter of what they want you to see about the beauty of their life, the, the truth of their life. It's not really the truth, right? And we've all heard about there's a lot of false news out there. Uh, well, there's false news in here, uh, there's false news on the TV, there's false news coming everywhere. And, and that then compounds the problem of where do I find 
peace? Where do I find beauty? Where do I find truth and goodness and love? Is the problem just where I'm looking? And so then sometimes the, the antidote is, well, let me just turn in because I can't control that. Like I can't control the media or the TV shows or my phone, uh, but I can control me. So let's turn inward. Let's be introspective. I, I can find beauty and peace and truth and love within me. And then we start to do that. And, you know, we even do it on these through that stuff too. I mean, we take selfies of ourselves looking for people to validate what we think is beautiful, what we think is truth, what we think is lovely. We do all that, but we turn it in. And, you know, that's a slippery slope to go down also because while we think that's safe because we can control that, we, we think we can, we can control ourselves. We're trying to control something that is not controllable. And we think that we are our own gods, that are our own worlds, and we can control that because we're creating the narrative we want to create. Yeah, well, that doesn't really bring the peace either. And although we think we can find beauty and truth and love in there, it, it's, it's false. It's not the real truth. It's not the real beauty. It's not the completeness of love. It, it, it's futile futile it's futile in itself so you know we're in this little you know kind of problem here that we're looking for the right thing and we know what it is we're just not looking in the right spots and so we're not finding it and in a way we kind of then just give up some people uh, they give up on that quest and, and they'll just try to find it somewhere else or just make it up on their own and Paul is going to speak right to that for us. Paul's going to kind of come right at that and hit us with the problem, which when we unpack it, it is really, truly the problem. Uh, even today, it was back in Roman times, uh, it is today. But the best part is that he's going to hit us with the antidote. Like, here is how to fix it, and it's easier than you think it is. So let's take a look at Romans. Let's kind of get started there. And then I'll dive into and unpack that a little bit and get to that antidote. So Romans chapter 1, verses 18 to 23. Uh, here, I'll pull it up on the screen here, and you guys can listen. Okay, let me read Romans 18, 1 to 23 to you. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who, by their unrighteousness, suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creepy things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. So Paul is here talking about, you know, the, this problem uh, and he hits us right with it. I mean, he doesn't like hold anything back. He goes right with uh, here, you know, the wrath of God. So, you know, there's something going on, you know, when you see wrath of God, like, like that's bad. Like that's a, not a good thing. And so the wrath of God is kind of coming against and he lists two things. And I think he lists them in order for, I think there's a specific order here. Uh, ungodliness and unrighteousness. Ungodliness, you, you, you all of a sudden start to give up on God and you don't live your life. There's a decline in morality. The things that God says are true, you don't really hold to anymore. The things that God says are beautiful, you, you, you just kind of quit listening to God and you, you, you head down this ungodliness, this belief that really you all of a sudden convince yourself that God isn't in these certain things or doesn't hold the key to that. And then that, of course, leads to unrighteousness, the ungodliness, the immorality, the decay, uh, the decay of a life living without God leads into an unrighteousness. You are not going to make yourself right on your own, especially heading down that path of ungodliness. 
and then the unrighteous life has you know, the, the unrighteous fruit that it produces. And so all of this, you got the ungodliness, the unrighteousness, and what it actually does is it, it suppresses the truth. And we sometimes are the suppressors. You know, we live the ungodly lives and, and the unrighteousness is manifested in what we say and in what we do. And in that, we're suppressing the truth because when confronted with that, when the truth confronts our ungodliness and our unrighteousness, it's too much to handle. Like, I just, I, I can't. Like, I can't handle that right now. I'm just going to stick with my ungodliness and my unrighteousness and I suppress the truth. There, there's another way the truth gets suppressed, and it's through all those filters, right? Those things that we, we process the world, and we process and receive what we think is the truth and what we think is the beauty and the love. Sometimes those things already come pre-suppressed for us. Regardless, the truth is getting suppressed, and there's all of a sudden this ungodliness and this unrighteousness that are ruling the day in our lives. And where does this now lead us? Well, it, it leads us that, you know, the knowledge of God isn't the problem. Uh, like, that isn't the issue. Paul points that out in Romans. It's not the knowledge. It's that we don't even honor him. There's no honor. There's no thanksgiving. We, we don't even recognize what he has done. We don't worship him. We, we certainly don't submit to him. We, we don't even really perceive his presence. There's no honor, no thanksgiving directed towards him. Because again, we're suppressing him in the truth and his beauty and love. So of course we don't flip it back to him because we're suppressing that. We actually would rather give it to ourselves. Hey, I'm the one down here doing everything. I should get the honor. I should get the praise. And he gets no honor, no thanksgiving, and, and we're now heading down that path, right? We're slipping down that slope. And it, it becomes futile, as Paul said. It's a, it's a futile effort. And our hearts have become darkened and foolish. And he said that we actually think we're wise. That's, you know, where, where the lies come in. We, we've convinced ourselves that we're wise when we're even more foolish than when we started down this slope. And then, it, you know, we're spiraling here. If you haven't felt the spiral from, you know, ungodliness to unrighteousness to, you know, no honor, you know, we're, we're, we're not even turning to him. We think we know it all and we know nothing. And where does this spiral end? In, in exchange. It, it's like when you got that ugly Christmas sweater and you went to the store and you said, can I trade this in for something better, for a different size, or uh, please, a diff how about a whole different thing? And we exchange the glory of the immortal God for an image, for something that we created in our own little world. We turn our, our honor and praise and thanksgiving and worship from the creator to something we create. I mean, it just sounds so silly and, and so dumb, but yet we do it. I'm mean, gonna be like, uh, you know, here. So I have this thing that my daughter Rachel made for me when she was little. Uh, it's a thing, okay, and it's colorful. It's, uh, it, it's sturdy, right, it's, it's traveled a lot. I think it was a mug at one point, like I think that was where like the handle was uh, obviously not very well constructed, uh, but painted. Look, she did these little circles, obviously got a hold of a tool that made circles and little lines and did this thing here, and, and it's colorful. So it'd be like if I went, Rachel, I, I love this. You know, I love you, uh, but I love this too. And you know what, actually? I think what I'm going to do is this, Rachel. You know, I love you, uh, but I actually am going to, I'm going to just love this more. Uh, because it just seems like this would be better to love. Um, I'm going to, you know, just cuddle with this when I really need a Rachel cuddle. I'm just going to, oh, thank you. Uh, you know, this is what I'll give all the praise and the honor to uh, when, the, when it does well. And, you know, I, I just, I think I'll just take this, you know, because I can bring it with me, put it in my pocket. Uh, I'm going to just let this be you, Rachel. And I'm just going to give this all the love and the honor and the praise uh, and all the glory. 
Like, that's just stupid. I mean, it sounds dumb. Like, you would never do that. Uh, even with something as beautiful as this. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, why would we do it for God? Why do we do that to God all the time? We take the glory of the immortal God and we trade it for this. Okay, I'd rather worship this. I mean, we don't do that, but we do do it to ourselves. God, I know what I will do. I know what's best for me. And we, we turn all of that to here because we're in this spiral. And we're trying to find beauty and goodness and truth and love and these things that God is. And we know that he wants to give us. And is it, are we just, are we looking in the wrong places? Is this not where I should be looking? Is the, the TV, like where are we supposed to be getting this from? Well, Paul has the answer for us. Within that passage was the antidote to, the, to, the, to getting us off of this spiral, getting off of this dizzy ride. Where can we go? Where can we turn? Because there's got to be something. I know God didn't leave us without a way. And this is the way. Let me go back to the scripture, and I've underlined and highlighted here uh, exactly where we're supposed to be looking. So here, looking back at Romans chapter 1, uh, I've underlined the verses that I want to focus in on as the antidote. Paul puts these in the middle because this is where we can now find a way out of that spiral uh, that Paul describes in 18 uh, and then 21 through 23, uh, where the truth is getting supp suppressed, uh, where we are, we are turning from the honor and the thanksgiving uh, and the glory of God. And Paul inserts this in the middle. So God, for what can be known about him, is plain to them, to us. Because God has shown it to them. So what can be known about God is plain. It's completely evident. Why? Because God has shown it to us. He has shown us what can be known about him. Like, oh, okay. And Paul continues, For his invisible attributes, a power, divine nature, are clearly perceived. There he goes again, plain, clearly perceived. We know God. We know his attributes. All his invisible attributes, we, they're as clear as day. And this isn't like he just started this. It says, ever since the creation of the world. So all the way back to Genesis 1, the in the beginning. It's, it's been plain and clear ever since then. And so it's like, well, okay. So if all that has, all there is to be known about God has been shown to us, and it's plain, and it's clear, and it has been here since the beginning of the world, well, Paul, where is it then? Like, where can we now find these and see them clearly and plainly? And he says, it is in the things that have been made. It's in creation. This is a, a, a theological concept called general revelation, where through creation and all that is created, you can know God. You can know there is a God. And as Paul said uh, in verse 22, or sorry, in, um, yeah, I think it was, uh, you know, it was the end of this one, 20. You're without excuse because through creation, you can say, I know there is a God. And that, that takes many different forms, many different forms. You can look at a beautiful sunset. We used to live in Arizona, and I love the desert landscape. And you can see forever in the desert. And when, the, when it's hot and it's in the summer and maybe the wind's been blowing, so there's some dust in the air. I know this doesn't sound too pretty or fun. Uh, but when the sun goes down, the, the heat you know, causes the kind of the, the wavy, uh, you can see the air moving. If you've ever looked at blacktop and you can see it almost looks like water. 
Well, when the sunset goes through that and there's like particles in the air, I mean, just the, the gr glory, the colors, it, the richness, it, it's so beautiful. There is a God. Through the birth of a child, um, through seeing things in the world, he's saying here that if you just will look at creation, really look at it, God has made himself known through that. It's plain. It is as clear as the sun in front of you. This is what Paul is trying to get us to see. And he's giving us also this antidote in the midst of these other verses to help us. Knowing that all that is around us, here is where you can turn, to turn back to the knowledge of God. You want to find the truth? You want to find the beauty, the loveliness? Turn to creation. So Paul is talking about the antidote. It's again, not knowledge of God that's the problem. He's made it plain. He's made it absolutely clear, abundantly clear. And he's, he's made the, the divine attributes, the, the power, you know, all the attributes of him are, are, are they're available. Again, plain, clear, right there. And it's not that this is just something that has been plopped down now because we're in a pandemic and, oh boy, those people in 2020 really need some help. Paul said, no, these have been here since creation. So since Genesis 1, in the beginning, they've been here. So where, oh, where, oh Lord, can we find the goodness and the beauty and the, the, the love and the truth and, and all the things we seek? The peace, where can we find it? Paul tells us it's in the things that are made. It's in creation. Now, this is a, a theological term called general revelation, uh, where God has revealed himself. He's revealed himself and made himself known through creation. And, and that can take many different shapes and forms. You know, I like to use this example, like you, you can look at a sunset. And sometimes you see one that is just, like, how can that be? Like, I've never even seen those colors before. And you can look at a sunset. We used to live in Arizona. And in Arizona, you can see forever in the desert. And when we would see the sunsets, especially if it was a hot day, and you get, you know, the, the, um, the heat coming off the ground and it causes these waves and, you know, it's a, it's, it's a weird kind of fuzziness to it. Uh, if there was a good windy day and it was dusty, there's particles in the air. And you would see these sunsets like, how are those colors even coming together? How is that happening? That is amazing. And the vastness of the desert and the valley, you go, there is a God. There is a creator who made this. You look at the birth of a child. You can see how does that happen? In his creation, he has made it plain that he is God. He has clearly perceived his attributes in creation. There is beauty out there. There is goodness. There is truth. There is love. You just got to be looking in the right place. And so Paul is here giving us this almost too easy of an answer for what seems a very difficult problem in a, in a, in a spiral that we could knock it out of. He's saying, stop and take a look around you and you will see God. He has made it that way. He has made it known. He has made it clear. He's made it plain. You don't have to guess. You don't have to wonder. You don't even have to look that far. It's right there. The expression, stop and smell the roses, it's really what this is all about. Stop and see where God is. He's all around. Now, we're not talking about salvation, okay? Uh, and that's not even what Paul's talking about in this passage here. Uh, we're talking about the knowledge of God to find those things and to get us off this slope that we can hold on to and find that security and that peace. And so my challenge to you high schoolers, uh, because I see you on breaks, I see you on lunches. I, I mean, it's the, if we still had the bells, as soon as the bells ring, these things are like, here we go. Let's see what's happening. Let's look for some truth. Let's look for some beauty. I mean, maybe you're just trying to entertain yourself. 
but let's also not kid yourself. You're, you're, you're doing it for a lot of reasons, okay? And so my challenge to you is this. What if you, instead of taking this, and a lot of times you guys are, when I walk by, uh, you're just like the camera's flipped on you and you're doing a lot of looking at you uh, or your friends pop in or, you know, there's just a whole lot that, that you're missing by staring at this or staring at Netflix or whatever. What if we, on this, you can flip the view and what if you started looking out that way and not finding your entertainment, not trying to find your comfort and your peace, I just need to relax. Uh, not trying to find any beauty uh, or goodness, you know, just looking back at yourself. But what if you flipped the view and started looking at where Paul's telling us to look? Into creation. Into what you walk by every day. You walk by, and again, it's the suppressing of the truth. I can't see it out here. Well, have you ever really looked? And so I challenge you to hashtag flip the view. Go ahead and do it. Start putting that in some of the posts. Flip the view and start looking out there at the world. Where do you see the beauty? Wow, let me, let me look at that. And fine, just snap, you know, take a picture of it, post it. You know, actually put us on it. Do South Lake Christian underscore uh, SMF. Uh, we'd love to see it. Uh, Student Missions Fellowship and, and respond to it and, and even you know, share it around. Where do you see beauty out in the world? Have you even looked? Flip the view and see where it's at. Do you want to know where God is at? Do you want to know where love is abounding? Why don't you flip the view and go see where God is known, where he's made it plain as day. The truth about who God is, the creator God, why don't you flip the view and take a look at where he has made it plain that he is God. And what security and peace that could possibly give us if we did that. And maybe, just maybe, you'll get sick of actually looking through the view to see it and you'll start to look for yourself. You'll, you'll start to yourself go out and seek and find in God's creation where he has made it plain, where he has made it clear that he is God. And we can find beauty. We can find truth. We can find love. And I promise you, we can also find a peace that we're never going to get anywhere else if we just do what Paul says and go seek where he has made it plain. Go seek where he has put it right there in front of our eyes each and every day. And so I challenge you to do that. To, to stop and smell the roses, to go and find where God has made himself known and see what that can do to your soul. See how that can nourish your soul. See how that can now start to give you that peace that, as Paul said, surpasses all understanding. Put down the images, put down the idols, and go seek after where God is. And I promise you, it will make a huge, huge difference. So let me pray, and uh, then we'll end for your Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, for who you are. Thank you for uh, revealing your truth to us. You have not left us to wander and to wonder, uh, but Lord, you have made yourself known. You have made yourself known to us each and every day. And I pray, Lord, that we can, in the midst of, of all that is happening, Father. Uh, we cannot seek after these images and these idols. We cannot uh, suppress the truth and, and just continue to spiral in ungodliness and unrighteousness, but we can set that down and we can turn to your creation where you have made yourself known and you have made it known plainly and clearly. Lord, help us have eyes to see that and hearts open to receive it. We, we all know we need it, but Lord, we just need your help. May your spirit wash over us all and draw us to the truth that is you. Draw us to the Son. May your spirit bring us, Lord, united together. 
Father God, we love you. We just thank you uh, for all that you've done for us, Lord. Uh, we just thank you, Father, for the way that you've made yourself known. Now, please, Lord, again, just give us eyes to see it and hearts to receive it uh, each and every day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, high school, have a great rest of your day.